Hello and welcome to this video. This is another tutorial and exercise video on JavaScript arrays. I'm having Wolfram Alpha open here and I wanted to show you, you can, for example, define a vector. This is the vector 1, 1 and Wolfram Alpha will show you how it looks like. So let's suppose we have this little vector here and here we have another one, vector 1, 0. And if we add those vectors together, um, we will have this red sum vector here, okay? So I want you to write some code in JavaScript that can perform this vector addition in JavaScript, okay? So to make this a little bit more explicit, we have two JavaScript arrays, v1 and v2. Those are our two vectors that we have just seen in Wolfram Alpha. Okay, and I want you to write a function, function at vec um, that takes those two arrays as parameters and this function should calculate the sum vector and the sum vector looks like this, okay? So an array with the elements 2 and 1, that should be the return value of this add vec function when we pass in v1 and v2. So why don't you pause the video now, take five minutes, try to solve this problem on your own and when you are ready, you can resume the video and I will show you an easy solution for that problem. Okay, welcome back. So whenever we do something like this, almost always it's a good idea to define the answer variable. Okay, so let's see. Um, I define an answer variable and this is this was an empty array okay and in the end of the function we're going to return the answer all right and now we do the processing step the basic idea is to iterate through the array and sum up element by element and push the result onto the answer array all right so in order to iterate through an array um, if you've seen my previous videos, you already know how to do this. We use a for loop and we loop until or while i is less than vh, uh, v1.length i++. Plus plus. And now we're going to push the sum onto the answer array. So answer. All right, so this shall do the trick. Uh, let's check it out at vec v1, v2. All right, we got ourselves a nice little sum vector here. Now, this is the easy solution. If you came up with this, congratulations, you did it. Um, but I want to elaborate a little bit on this. Let's play around with those values a little bit. First of all, I want to show you that you don't have to pass in variables into a function, okay? You can define the vectors or the arrays uh, on the fly, okay? So let's try out this call here. It yields two, three, four. So it seems correct to me. Very good. Now let's play around a little and what? Uh, let's check what happens when we pass in two vectors with different lengths, okay? So what happens here is that we get this freaking NAN, which stands for not a number. So the problem is that in our little function here, we assumed that the length of both arrays is equal. Okay, which is obviously not the case in this call. That's one problem, but there's more problems on the way. If I pass in something completely ridiculous, like false or whatsoever, right? then nothing works. Every, everything will be not a number. So this is, this is probably not what we would ex expect in this case, right? So let's try something else. Let's try to pass in null. Oh my God, now we have an error. So basically we have some problems with our solution here. So let's try to pimp it a little bit. The basic problem is that we assumed stuff, okay? We assumed v1 and v2 to be arrays, 
which which we cannot enforce in JavaScript because JavaScript is a dynamically typed language. So v1 and v2, they could be of any type. It could be booleans, it could be strings, integers, or arrays whatsoever, okay? So we need to check if those values, if those parameters are indeed arrays. Luckily, there is a function called array dot is array, okay? And it takes one parameter and it will return true if the parameter is an array, false otherwise, okay? So this way we can check if v1 is indeed an array. Let's do the same for v2. All right, and now that we know that both v1 and v2 are arrays, we can check their length, okay? We need them to be of equal length. So let's check this. All right, so if this condition is fulfilled, we can do our calculation safely. Otherwise, we ran into a problem, okay? And now we can do something to solve the problem, or in our case, I mean, what, what should we do? It's always a good idea to, to log to the console. So let's do this, console.log cannot add v1 plus v2. Okay, and then we can decide what to do and I decide to return null, okay? Whatever you're going to do, you're going to do in, this, uh, in, in, in this else branch is up to you. You need to decide how your code should behave. But when checking the prerequisites, you suddenly have the power to decide what's going to happen if the prerequisites are not fulfilled. That's the important thing here, okay? You need the power to decide yourself what happens when v1 and v2 are not arrays or are not of equal length. So let's try it out. Headwag. It's a good idea to try out um, if it still works, all right? So let's try the valid case, okay? That seems good to me. And now let's try what's happening when we pass in two arrays of different length. And here we have our console.log message, cannot add v1 plus v2, and the return value of the function is null. Very good. Now let's try what happens when I pass in false, same thing. When I pass in null, same thing. Okay, now you have the power to check if the addVec function returns null, you know that something went wrong, okay? You don't have this kind of different and unexpected behavior that we had previously, okay? So that's it for that video. The two key takeaways here are, first, this is how you do uh, array stuff, you know, traversing an array, handling arrays whatsoever. This is a major takeaway. And the other major takeaway is, always check your prerequisites, okay? Always check what values you get in your function. So that's it. I hope you liked the video. If you liked it, give me the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, spread the word whatsoever. Happy coding and see you next time.